Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and this is the story of how I'm regaining my focus. And you know, I always felt I was the most myself when I had time to devote myself to one idea or project. But a lot of the time I feel I keep getting distracted. Life keeps throwing me curveballs, there's appointments, there's work to do, there's tasks, there's chores, there's routine always constantly hitting at me and that means a lot of time I feel overwhelmed. I don't know if you felt that way but constantly I feel distracted by my phone, by messages, by things that are happening and you know I've also started feeling it while I'm working on my own projects. It's like I can never let go of all the other things that are happening around me. Now most of the time I feel even when I'm writing or making a video that Oh, when I'm done with the video, I gotta go there and I gotta do that and I gotta do this and I gotta take care of that and oh, I still haven't done that and oh, I still need to do this and this kind of overwhelm is uh, honestly really difficult and it's really hard for me at times and these are perhaps I feel the number one reason why a lot of people think I'm perceiving type. I think you can see how scattered I can be in my videos sometimes and it's not my intention but it leaks out. I can't really keep it. Uh, like when I did this full time and this was about a year back this wasn't a problem. When I made videos before I got my uh, job in Amsterdam I had all the time in the world to devote myself to writing a script, making sure everything was plotted from start to finish. But nowadays that time is gone and I have to prioritize. And you know, you can't really prioritize when you don't have time to prioritize. You can't really organize when there's always a full schedule and there's always things to do. And the thing that bothers me the most and has always bothered me the most is my lack of alone time and time to just sit down. When I have all these appointments, when I have all these people to talk to, all these things to take care of, all these things to do, I feel I can never sit still. And if I ever do sit still and if I ever do take time to read or to take it easy, there is a guilt, a guilt in uh, sitting still, a guilt in reading, a guilt in having a personal free time and that I devote to relaxing and to taking it easy and to just staring up at the ceiling and just, you know, reflecting on my life and what I'm doing and where I'm going. At the same time, it's during these times where I have my brightest ideas and where I get the most clarity and focus. If I can take a few hours to put on lo-fi hip-hop and just write without anybody messaging me, without any pop-up notifications, without any comments, without anybody calling me, without the to-do list in my head, I can feel so chill. But nowadays I can't even if I try. Sometimes I try to put on these lists, sometimes I try to do it and I tell myself, oh I'm just gonna do it. But the thing is, you know, the stress of all the things that have to be done is so present that it keeps me from going into that flow state. And I've been talking about flow states since I started with this content, with this work. I've been talking to you guys about how important it is to nurture and maintain a flow state. So I have to start taking my own lessons. I have to start taking a page from my own book. And uh, I have to start finding a way to find my way back to my own flow state. And in doing so, I have to uh, find a more rounded understanding of these things. Honestly, intuition and judging is uh, that focus on that one idea or that one project or that one big picture, long-term prospect. But life is about and has a lot of instant gratification. There's... Uh, all these things happening around you that could you could do there's all these small tasks all these small easy things all those low-hanging fruits you know that you could run for and to grab and just pick and enjoy at any moment so you have to think about you know what kind of life you want to live and how you want your life to be and you have to think about what will give you the most joy in long term so what I've started doing is um, I've started looking at 
how I can be a judging type, not just in theory, but also on paper. Uh, how I can get it actually down in my life and how I can get the time and the schedule and the routine that can help support me in it. So what I've been thinking about is, is there a chance for me to get a consistent day off? Is there a chance for me to get uh, some uh, consistent time during the weekend? Is there a chance for me to uh, start organizing myself and my life a little bit more? I've started to use work with folders, organizing all the documents. I've started to divide documents into smaller documents, you know. I started doing all these small neat tricks to kind of hack my mind and to uh, organize it properly. And there is what I'm looking for is what I'm looking for is I want to be able to kind of have an idea, a rough idea of what I'm going to do in a day. So I want to know what will I do then, where will I go then and what will I be up to then. But a lot of time, you know, when you have other people in your life, that's not really possible. So you do have to compromise. Uh, I have an ENFP girlfriend and sometimes she can't tell me what she's going to do in the evening or what she wants to do or what she thinks she will prefer. So a lot of time I have to keep some room for flexibility, but then I can still make a prediction for myself. What do I think we will happen? What do I think will be done? And so using that prediction, I can organize my life around it. And then maybe I can have a backup plan if it doesn't go that way. If I end up going there anyways, yeah, then I will do this. So uh, taking a time like an hour before I get started to take a shower, and to like write down and here's where I need to make a change in my life. I used to have uh, pa papers to write on wherever I went but now I feel like I never have any paper to write on anymore and it's <laughs> kind of the most silly thing ever uh, because I write everything in my computer nowadays but I should still have paper to write on with my own hands with a pen I should still keep that part of myself because uh, there are some things you can never write down and there's not enough documents on the computer to support all the things I come up with and having it down and having that creativity to write on different parts of the paper and uh, to divide it and to sometimes sometimes that's just faster than anything else so I don't know what's been going on but I find myself like searching over the room for paper and going like oh there's no paper and then I'm um, just realizing, wait a second, why don't I go and buy paper and not just a little paper, just a lot of different notebooks and then storing them away at different places in my backpack, in uh, my suitcase, in my, <laughs> I don't know, you know, storing them away at different places where they're easy to reach at any time and making sure I always keep a pen by. So, yeah, I can do something with it. Being a creative type is uh, really frustrating sometimes in terms of focus because you have so many ideas that the ideas counteract the focus you have. Um, sometimes when I'm writing something, and I've been writing for a long time now, and uh, a personal book is noting down my systems and everything, but what happens is I hit page 50 and I start feeling so overwhelmed by all the loose ends. That chapter, that chapter, that chapter, that place, all these places I need more work on and realizing I need to organize these things I need to put them in different folders I need to divide the work I need to write the master document I need to like put them in different places and I need to have an overview like no matter what I'm doing and how big it is I need to have an overview at all times and I have to see okay if where should that go and 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 then I need to be able to pack it all together Thinking about these things, I'm confident that I can regain back some focus and uh, I've noticed to me that focus for me is confidence. Uh, the more focused I am, the more confident I am, the more distracted I am, the less confident I am. I've noticed that there's even a, there's some kind of uh, pattern in that, in that I... I can be the person that is always doing different things and always running around and being scattered but I can feel, I can be so acutely aware of how stressed I am in those situations and how little control I feel in those situations that 
to me those are telling tales of why I'm a judging type and not a perceiving type because what I see with perceiving types is there is such a control such a confidence in being able to multitask, in being able to handle different incoming phone calls, in being able to stay on top of different emails, in being able to manage through all those tasks that you have on a to-do list, in being able to keep track of all those data points and meeting topics and all those things that are happening around you, in being able to keep track of all the people in the room and what they're doing and what they will do next. What I noticed with perceiving types is they have uh, an ability to thrive in chaos where I only have ability to learn in chaos, <laughs> where for me I feel uh, I need the control and I need the consistency and I need the structure. And for me that's just been a really telling tale. I think uh, with the MTI what you notice is an overfocus on a person's behavior rather than their flow state. And the behavior can be Anyone can be distracted, anyone can be inauthentic, anyone can be moral, anyone can be confident, anyone can be anything, anyone can have any personality trait. But when are they in a flow state? That is the question. That is how you can know for sure what personality type you are, no matter how rough or chaotic your life is. I hope this video made things a little bit more clear to you. Thanks everyone for watching and see you all in the next video.